Welcome back to Outdoor guys. Today we're going to be doing a review on the Browning Defender Ridgeline cellular trail camera from Browning and there's a couple key points that I want to highlight that sets this camera out from other cellular trail cameras. Real quick though you can go over to browningtrailcameras.com and pick this camera up for $219.99. There's a couple reasons why I trust the Brownings and they're one of my favorite uh, trail cameras. Alright guys so with most cellular trail cameras you have to pick one carrier whether it's AT&T or Verizon. This Defender Ridgeline actually does both. So you can pick Verizon or AT&T depending on, you know, what your service is like in that specific area that you're using the camera in. So you can, you know, some people have problems depending on the coverage with either or, but you can select the one that gives you the best signal, which is great to not have to buy a whole nother camera just to have that ability and feature. So I think that's one of the biggest selling points for this exact camera is that you can use AT&T or Verizon, which is called dual carrier technology. So I think that's a great feature um, for this Defender Ridgeline. Another thing I really like about the Defender Ridgeline, guys, is you can't really see, but once I get it out of the box, I'll show you guys a closer look, but it has a really small antenna. So if you have bears around your area, I've had that issue before. That's one of the first things they go for. Um, so branch falls out of the tree and hits it, breaks it off, raccoon, squirrel, whatever gets on your camera, rips it off. You won't have service. So that's another really good feature I wanted to highlight and mention for you guys about the Defender Ridgeline. I wanted to let you guys know too, I'm gonna link down in the video description below. I did a ton of Browning trail camera reviews. My favorite trail camera for sure. It's helped me get on a lot of deer and they've been really reliable for me and the quality is awesome. So I couldn't be happier with them, but I'll link them down in the video description below. So if you guys are looking at a different model, the most comparable one to me is the regular Defender wireless trail camera, which came out before this one a couple years ago. I did a review on that. So if you like a viewing screen on your camera, that's what the Defender wireless has, you know, compared to the Ridgeline, which this is coming in at a cheaper price point though. So you lose that screen. So it just depends if you want that screen or not. Um, I'm a fan of the screen, I'll be honest with you. It's kind of a must have for me, but at this price point, I think, you know, it's something that you can give up because when I mount this in the woods, I'm gonna take you guys back there with me. When I put it on a tree, I'll just take a test picture to make sure I have it set up correctly. That's kind of the advantage you get to having a viewing screen on there. As you can see exactly where you have it set up and make sure it's exactly where you want it to be. I'll list the plans and everything for you know what this costs monthly to run this to get you know your picture sent to your smartphone or your email I'll roll that into this video I'm gonna try to make this video shorter guys because I've noticed from my past ones um, you know the watch time is not all the way through so I'm gonna try to keep with cut some things out and try to keep this one straight to the point one huge thing though guys I need your guys engagement um, YouTube will recommend this video more if you guys are liking and commenting, you know, so that is really important. Definitely drop a comment down below and let me know if you picked up this Browning Defender Ridgeline after watching this video. Um, I really enjoy your guys' feedback either way, so make sure you drop something down below. So if you're new to wireless trail cameras, guys, there's definitely a couple of advantages to having them. I think the biggest one is just not going in and leaving your scent in spots that you're going to be hunting. Um, I think that's probably the biggest one. And it saves you trips, you know, from going back and forth to the hunting property, in or, you know, in and out. Depending how far you are away from your property, you know, a lot of people will put them maybe in another state or that way you can always know real time too what's going on. A big one for me too is making real time hunting decisions based off of what these cameras are telling you. Like a good example, the rut, um, you got it on a scrape. When they start hitting it in daytime, you know, all right, it's go time. You can start hunting them without, you know, taking a chance of going in too early or too late. So that's Another big thing with the wireless cameras, I think everybody should have one for them reasons. All right, um, on to the next thing. So, okay, this Defender Ridgeline, it takes 16 AA batteries. I know that kind of seems like a lot, and it definitely is, but what you got to understand with that is, 
you're going to get longer battery life out of the camera. So, I mean, it's not, you know, it's a lot of batteries, but at the same time, kind of always something you got to give up to get what you want. And with that in mind, like with the regular Defender, don't quote me on it specifically, but from what I remember, I usually get like a couple months out of the camera before I have to change the batteries. And there's other options too, like Browning offers the you know, the solar panel, so you don't have to change batteries as much, or if, like I said before, like if you're traveling for to your hunting property, it'll save you a lot to just invest in one of them solar panels, but for me, I'm not that far from the property, so, you know, if I get two months out of it, give or take, now that's going to depend on how much activity you got, if you're putting it over bait, etc., but for me, I just am fine with how many batteries it takes, because it it does the job for me and it lasts long enough for me. Um, the Brownings have excellent battery life. Even the other models that I've used, um, you know, have, have definitely held up. So I'll roll in or I'll link down below what batteries I recommend. You definitely want to use the Energizer Lithiums. They hold up. They last longer. They do better in extreme temperatures. And I'll list the SD cards that I recommend for this camera down in the video description below too so you guys have everything you need like i said i'm gonna cut out some of like all me running down all the features and like maybe the unboxing i'm not sure yet i just want to keep this short and sweet and keep your guys attention all the way through so if you want to see something i didn't go over though drop a comment if you guys got any questions about it um, i'd be more than happy to help you guys down in the comment section below but if you haven't subbed, make sure you smash that subscribe button down for me. Give this video a like if you liked it. Drop a comment like I said. Share this video. It really helps the channel out as well. Very important too. Make sure you ring that notification bell so as soon as I drop a video, you guys will be the first to know about it. Okay, I wanted to let you guys know up front too that I did not pay for this camera. Browning sent me this camera and I'm not getting paid to do this video. Um, I like to bring you guys... You know products that I believe in and I've used in the past and have experience with and that you know work and get the job done I'd like to share that with you guys um, I obviously haven't tried this yet this is the first time that's why I'm doing a review I did purchase a second one though so we're gonna be putting both out so I can cover a little bit more ground and I want to you know get good footage for you guys we're gonna test the camera on uh, picture mode and video mode I'm probably not gonna run it for a couple months because I want to get this video out to you guys but you know I can stay in communication with you guys through the comments you know to see how the battery life my guess is it's going to be the same as the regular Defender which you know like I said was I got a good solid two months out of it before you know depending on activity and temperature and stuff like that but um so back to that though I'm always going to give you guys my honest opinion you know no matter what relationship I have with companies or anything like that so I just want you guys to know that up front you're going to see everything that I experience with this camera, whether it's good or bad, okay? So you can also use this Defender Ridgeline for security purposes. I know some people use them for like surveillance or, you know, to watch their property. It does have the infrared invisible technology in it. So, you know, from the Defender, it just has a real, real light red glow to it, which if you're not looking directly at it in the dark, you're not going to see it. So... Um, I wanted to go over that and I also wanted to tell you that, you know, I'll make sure that you guys are comfortable with knowing how to use this camera and set it up. You're going to use the Strikeforce app, the Strikeforce wireless app to set this camera up. There'll be directions in the box, but it looks very close in size to the regular Defender wireless trail camera. So once I get it out of the box, like I'll show you guys a comparison so you can see the size. I think that's it for now. I hope it's, this didn't go too long, but there was a lot that I had to, you know, say to you guys and that I wanted to go over. So I hope I'm not all over the place, but what we're going to do next is we're going to take this camera out in the field. Um, we're going to test it. Like I said, put it to the test and the elements, um, test the battery life. I'm going to show you guys the quality pictures that it takes, um, the regular pictures, then the HD uploads, and then I'm going to show you the video. I'm going to show you, you know, where I set them up, what I'm looking for. Um, maybe I can give you some tips on hunting. I believe today is October 18th. Yeah, so 
we're closing in on a pre-rotten rot, which is a great time to get these out, especially if you're trying to decide on where you want to hunt based off a sign. Um, the property that I hunt is just a little 20 acre piece and uh, we don't hold a lot of core bucks there, but during a rut, we do have a lot of doe bedding and them bucks will come over from the surrounding farm. So, um, you know, if you guys are in the hunt and you probably are, that's why you're watching this video. Um, I'll include some of that stuff too, just to keep this interesting. And I just enjoy doing it. All right, I have to stop talking because this is gonna, this is gonna get longer than I wanted it to. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope this helps you out and I hope that you learn something from it. Stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, so we're just gonna go through the menu here and I'm gonna show you how to uh, select your carrier. We're gonna go ahead and do Verizon. We're gonna hit OK on that. Um, hit yes. Make sure that's one, the one we want to go with. And then you're going to get a barcode that comes up. And you can scan that barcode right through the Strikeforce wireless app. One of them did perfectly fine. Um, all the information came up. But the other ridge line had some issues. So it's no big deal. Um, you can manually enter the information You know that's inside of your camera door. Um, your IMEI number um, and stuff like that so I'm going to show you real quick if you have that same issue you can just log in to your Strikeforce wireless account and I'm going to show you how to do it manually right here add camera um, you know make sure you select the right carrier because if you don't it won't work um, you can name the camera whatever you want ICID and we're going to do the IMEI number next and then I'll show you from here, um, you know, what to do. Go ahead and hit add camera. Um, now with this one, we're going to go ahead and, and put the two on Hunter Plus. Um, review and pay is going to be another $5 because we're adding a second camera to the plan. And there you go. It dropped in. We got both of them activated. Um, we're going to go back now. And right here, guys, is where you would change all your settings for the camera. I showed you, you know, earlier in the video how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go into that too much. Okay, you can see up top, camera successfully updated. Sometimes you might have to refresh the page to make sure um, everything's... There you go. You can see I refreshed again. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and power the camera on. And we're going to go... We're going to scroll down the LTE test and hit enter. Um, it's going to search. It doesn't take too long. Um, once the service is found, you'll see it comes up on the screen. If we took a test picture, that's where it would show up right here. It's letting you know your signal. Um, you may have to do this again to make sure the test picture comes through. But we're going to go, it, you know, again, it's showing you the signal here. Um, Looks like we got three bars, and then we're going to go and uh, see it says finish three. So that means it uploaded three test pictures, and then we're going to go through the uh, Strike Force website, and we're going to check just to make sure we got the pictures. Um, we're going to re-log in again just to make sure, and then, you know, you can see that we have um, the pictures right here from both cameras. Okay, um, everything came through like it should be. It's definitely a good idea to test these things at home, guys, before you guys go out into the field. Um, you want to make sure everything's on the up and up before you go out there. That way you don't have any problems and have to bring the camera back home or anything like that. So I just wanted to include some of this stuff. Um, you know, I'm going through here now to show you, um, you know, kind of what happened with scanning that QR code. I thought it was because maybe I was screen recording, so it wasn't grabbing it. But I tried, you know, I actually stopped the screen recording, tried doing it without that. It just wouldn't grab it. Um, but like I said, on the other one, it worked. So I showed you how to, you know, handle both situations in case you run into that problem. 
Okay, so let's go ahead into our Strike Force Wireless app and we're gonna go to the uh, my subscriptions. And then I'm gonna show you guys real quick if you wanted to suspend your camera, that way you're not getting billed. Um, it's real simple, you just click right here, go down to suspend camera, it's gonna let you know. Um, and then go ahead and confirm and hit suspend camera. It's it's gonna keep all the you know all the numbers, the information for your camera, so you don't have to re-enter that every time you want to reactivate your camera. It's really simple. Um, it's a great feature. Um, also, you can see right here both cameras say suspended, so you know. I'm also going to show you how to restore. This is how you would restore it when you're ready to you know start using the camera again. Um, restore camera. You can see number two um, is restored. So. Like I said, I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. You know, on the off season, you, you're you not going to be using it. So I showed you how to reactivate it when you guys are ready. And then we're just going to go through my pictures here. And I'm going to show you guys the standard definition, how it looks when it uploads to the app. I tried to pick some of the same ones that I put in the video with the HD uploads. Um, the pictures are, they look good. You know what I mean? Um... Here's one of a fox in the snow. I just wanted to give you guys a bunch of different examples so you guys can see it. And, you know, different lighting. There's a doe right there on the corn pile. <laughs> There's me um, doing something out there. Scroll on down, see what else we got here. There's a doe in the uh, middle of the day there or in daylight. There's the, the famous tractor pick. There's a buck cruising there during a rut. There's a younger buck during the day here um, with really good lighting. Looks awesome. Here's another buck cruising through. There's another buck on a different part of the property. Another little guy here hitting a scrape. You see he's rubbing his head on a licking branch. And then here's me, um, you know, when I first deployed the cameras. That's me trying to, you know, get the angle right and filming and doing all kind of crazy stuff. There's me again. Take you all the way back to when I first put the cameras out. All right, guys, we're out here. We're going to find, I just found the scrape walking in on our trail, and I just... I mentioned before I wanted to show you guys some tips maybe if um, you know you're trying to find some fresh sign but um, I was out here like a week ago I think it was and I put some other brownings out just regular uh, trail cams I put out the spec ops edge and I put out the spec ops elite HP 4 and I put them all on video if something significant shows up I'll drop it in here so you guys can check it out but yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it's right here um, you can see where they let me get you down here you can see where they freshly like pulled at the dirt and got it dug up here um, usually like right here there's a a hanging limb or overhead limb where they you know rub their scent on um, those and bucks will make scrapes this time of year and I got I got doe bedding over here and I also got some right behind me this way so if you look I know I'm swinging you all around. If you look behind me right here, that's our trail going through the property. But maybe that'll help you guys out. Like if you know where doe bedding is or you got a new property, just, you know, walk the trails and look for, definitely keep your eyes down so you can find scrapes. Um, this is kind of a smaller one. Bigger ones is what you want to find. Hang a camera on it. See what's showing up. It's a good way to get inventory on everything. Like I said, everything will hit it. And then sometimes if you look real close, I don't want to touch this one, but looks like the end's broken off of this one a little bit. Oh, here we go, right here. You guys see that branch is, is broke from them rubbing. You know, they'll rub their antlers and stuff in there, leaving their scent, letting everything around know who's who's been here, who's the dominant buck. They can tell age, all that stuff, which is really cool. Try to find the best spots to put these wireless defender ridge lines on and uh we'll see what shows up stay tuned i'm gonna turn you back on once i find that spot 
Alright guys, I came back here, it's warm, it's like 75, pretty decent wind going so it covers my sound and it's going to rain tonight so that'll wash away my scent. But real quick, like if you know the property already, like look for historical sign, like spot sign was laid down before, usually you know it's nearby or in the exact same spots. I've seen scrapes show up in the exact same spot and what I was saying before, I've seen big bucks even hit little scrapes. So, that really doesn't matter. I know the bigger ones may be better to find, but the smaller ones are good too. So like I said, hang a camera on them if you find them, especially if they're close to bedding. All right, guys, I found the rub right here. Looks older, but pretty decent. I'm going to show you right up here. That's where I'm going to hang the uh, Defender Ridge line on a scrape. I just checked the browning up there that I put out last week, and... I put it on a scrape, it was small, it kind of looked like maybe, I wasn't sure if it was a deer scrape to be honest, but um, I was right it was, there was a couple does coming and hitting it, so I'm going to go ahead and hang the Defender Ridge line right there so we can keep an eye and see when a buck show up. No bucks yet, this property to the best of my knowledge doesn't have core bucks on it, so they're not going to come to like peak rut over to this property, but a 20 acre piece we're surrounded by farms and we got doe bedding i may have mentioned this before i don't want to go too off track but all this kind of plays into how i place trail cameras where i'm putting them and why so i just want to give you a little bit of the backstory but let's go ahead and uh get these ridge lines hung and i'll be right back guys all right guys so i got both browning set up I got the ridge line right next to the Spec Ops Elite HP4. It's either that one or the Spec Ops Edge, but um, I'm gonna swing around and it scrapes right down here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll walk down a little bit. Scrapes right down here. And branch and stuff right there and then I'm pretty much right on the street and then right on that big let me move here right on that big pine tree I got both of them set right on there um, that way when a buck show up I'll know immediately because they'll start hitting them scrapes too especially because they're so close to doe bedding back here um, just wanted to show you my setup if you were um, wondering what mount I used that's a stick and pick mount it just screws right into the tree. You don't need no straps or anything like that. And I also picked a fatter tree. It hides the background of the camera or the silhouette. And I also put them higher than eye level. That way the deer really won't pay no attention to them. So that's just a couple tips of hanging cameras, trees to look for, just things to keep in mind. All right, we gotta get the second one deployed. I'm gonna walk the property, try to find some fresh sign again. And uh, if we can do that, we're going to go ahead and hang the second one either way. Stay tuned, guys. Real quick, though, before we go, I'm going to show you how to do, like, the LTE status check. Make sure we got signal right where we're at before we leave. And then we'll also take a test picture just to make sure we're all good. Okay? I'm going to flip you around here. Alright, we're good there guys. I'm going to show you one more feature. The Browning Defender Ridgeline has to offer. And this is just to make sure if you were unsure the camera's triggering what you want it to or set up in the spot, you know, to catch the game moving in front of the camera. It's called the test, aim test mode. And uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to flip you around once I find it. Here we go, it's called motion test. We're going to go ahead and turn that to on. Okay? See that red light light up? That's letting you know that you're catching what you need to be catching. Alright, so we'll walk down here. We can, hopefully you guys can see that behind me. It's lit up. Alright, and it'll... It's... Yeah, it's lighting up. Um, we just want to make sure we got that. 
I'm gonna turn it a little bit because I don't see it. I might have to angle it a couple ways here. Just to make sure we're all right, it's getting me. I mean, that's right on the scrape. It's lighting up. You see it right here. I think it's pretty good. I might angle it that way. Just a little bit more though, just to make sure. And that makes it a little bit tougher when you don't have the viewing screen. But like a trick I said before that you can do, you can just take a test picture and look at it on your um, on your app, your Strikeforce wireless app. That's what I'm gonna do. You don't even really have to do the LTE status or network test. You can just take a test picture, see if it sends it, and you're good. But um, it's good to know what your signal is, though. It's taking a test picture now. So we're going to see. Uh, make sure we get the picture through the app. And then uh, we got to get this other one out and get out of here. All right, so I hit network status, and it says LTE search, and same thing. Looks like we got two bars, which I feel like I've had that before and I've had good enough signal, so should be fine. I'm trying to get this picture to come through though. Do the LTE test again and see what happens. Okay, it said finish one. So you gotta hit that again for it to actually send that test photo to your Strike Force Wireless app. Okay, we got it guys. There it is right there. So that's a good way you can uh that didn't take long at all. I don't know if you guys can see that good or there you go. That's a good way to see if you got your camera positioned right right there, even you know, without the, the big viewing screen like the regular defender has. So it looks pretty good. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna move it just a little bit and then um we'll get on to the next camera guys. Stay tuned. <laughs> 